From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. It's 6 o'clock this Thursday. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning. Now, it's the last thing you want to hear as we approach winter. It is going to cost you some more to heat your mm. home. We'll have details on that a little, little bit later in the show. But first, Miller, will we need to crank up the heaters anytime soon? Yes, we will, As we, especially as we get into next week. Not only are we talking about temperatures really cooling down, but the possibility of seeing some snow on Monday here in Yellowstone County. Big story yesterday, of course, the winds and the record heat. Look at this, 55 already at the airport, so we're milder than normal. Just shows you what kind of day we have on the way as we're coming off record daytime highs yesterday. Winds out of the southwest at about 20 miles an hour. That could still be a, sto a story this morning as we go along. Could see some gusts up to 40 here in Billings uh, in um, Livingston, where we saw a gust yesterday of 75, or excuse me, 85. Still a chance to see some gust up to 70 this morning, but those numbers will taper off. Yesterday we hit a high of 65 that tied a record. We can do it all over again today. Very mild out there with temperatures mainly in the 50s right now. We do have some 30s like uh, into the 30s, mid 30s in Mile City, right at the freezing mark at Glendive. But look at those highs today back into the 60s, but it doesn't last. Details coming up. Victoria. We begin with some devastating news this morning. A Montana town is burning. Numerous homes in Denton, a town of 200, about 90 miles east of Great Falls, are gone. Take a look at these grain elevators engulfed in flames. The fire has done the most damage to the south side of town, but it is spreading. Flames moved into Denton yesterday, fueled by 70 mile an hour wind gusts. The only good news is no one has been injured and the town was evacuated before flames reached it. Closer to Great Falls, a 11 homes are gone as another wildfire swept through that area. The Gibson Flats fire started yesterday and burned houses, vehicles and other buildings before it was eventually put out. Thankfully, no one was injured. This Montana wildfire season feels never ending. Listen to these statistics from MT Fire Info. In just the last 24 hours, there have been six new wildland fires. 22 started this week. 19 wildfires are actively burning across the state. And in total this year, there's been more than 20 2700 fires of varying size. Now take a look at this pie chart over my shoulder. It's a breakdown of how these fires started. That large chunk in red shows a majority or 55% of Montana wildfires are human caused. The fate of the Roe v. Wade 1973 historic case is back in the hands of the Supreme Court. As CBS's Laura Podesta explains, the conservative heavy court has indicated it's likely leaning towards approving new limits on abortion. Um, we're moving towards a society where we're forcing people to give birth. You murdered, murdered the abortionist. Passionate activists on both sides of the abortion debate gathered outside the Supreme Court yesterday as the justices heard arguments that could determine if Roe versus Wade will be thrown out. The ruling is tied to a new Mississippi law that makes abortions illegal after 15 weeks of pregnancy. After just two hours of arguments, six of the nine justices indicated they'd likely uphold the ban. A lawyer for Mississippi said states, not the justices, should be drawing the lines. That argument seemed to resonate with Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Why should this court be the arbiter rather than uh, Congress, the state legislatures, state Supreme Courts, the people being able to uh, resolve this? Liberal justices, though, argued after almost 50 years, Roe v. Wade has been law too long to overturn. Will this institution survive the stench that this creates? in the public perception that the Constitution and its reading are just political acts. The decision will have implications far beyond Mississippi. If Roe v. Wade is partially or completely overturned, several conservative-leaning states already have measures in place that would ban all or almost all abortions. If the court gets rid of the viability line, eliminates it, then states will try to ban abortion at basically any point in pregnancy. An official decision by the justices will likely not come down until June when the high court recesses. Laura Podesta, CBS News. If, if it upholds the Mississippi 15 week ban, it would be a major retreat from the court's last big abortion case in 1992 when the court drew the line of viability around 24 weeks. According to the CDC, more than 90% of abortions are performed in the first 13 weeks of pregnancy well before viability. 
A group of pro-life advocates held a rally in Billings yesterday, hoping this could be the beginning of the end of Roe v. Wade. A joint prayer session was held with people all across the country, but pro-choice Montanans are watching this case closely as well. The vice president of Montana's Planned Parenthood chapter is worried the conservative justices won't rule in their favor. It's a sad day uh, for this country. Uh, about 50 years of court precedent are uh, could be undone if the Supreme Court decides to support the Mississippi uh, ban. And the reason why it's so sad is because every person in this country deserves the ability to make their own decisions about their bodies. If the Supreme Court rules that the Mississippi abortion law stands, 26 states are expected to move to outlaw abortion by state constitutional amendments. The CDC is searching for more Omicron infections after the new coronavirus variant was detected for the first time in the U.S. The patient recently visited South Africa and became ill after returning to California last week. It's still unclear if Omicron spreads more easily or is more vaccine resistant than other strains. To help curb the spread, President Joe Biden is extremely extending a requirement that people wear masks on airplanes, trains, and buses from January to mid-March. Billings hospitals will not mandate COVID shots for employees after a court ruling this week put a pause on federal vaccine mandates. But there was a recent increase in staff getting their shots. Of Billings Clinic's 4,700 employees, about 50 got vaccinated in the last few weeks. About 300 employees have filed medical or religious exemptions. About 80% of Billings Clinic staff are vaccinated or have an exemption. Numbers that are consistent in medical workers across the state. About 1,039 nurses responded to our survey, which that was a huge, huge response back. We were super glad to get that. 85% of them were vaccinated. So I know 85% of the nurses got vaccinated under emergency off because it's the right thing to do. We need to care for our community, care for our patients and each other. Like Billings Clinic, SCL Health says it will pause implementing the federal vaccination mandate until the lawsuit surrounding it is resolved. A man is dead, struck by a vehicle while walking near the 5400 block of Midland Road here in Billings. It happened last night, just after 5 o'clock. Police are still investigating how it happened. The victim was 59 years old. His name has not been released. We'll work to update you as more information becomes available. It's about to cost many of us a lot more money to heat our homes. Q2's Casey Conlin tells us why. If you're like me, you rely on this to heat your house, a natural gas furnace. It's Montana's most common and cheapest way. But gas bills have been going up over the last year, and they're about to get even higher. We are looking at about a 60% increase for our Montana customers. Experts point to a number of reasons, but the main one is simple, more demand than supply. Natural gas reserves are the lowest they've been in five years, so prices are up. Rates and billings increased almost 14% from September 2020 to September of this year, with the share price peaking at 631 in early October. But Mother Nature has been on our side since then. We had a very mild November. Consumption was down in Montana about 15%, um, and, and the price of gas has gone down. All the way down to 457 as of closed Tuesday. That's still higher than the $2 to $3 range we've been used to for the last decade or so. But Montana Dakota Utilities, Billings' main provider with 65,000 customers, says it was much worse not long ago. 2008, 9, somewhere in there, gas prices were anticipated to be into that $10 to $13 a decatherm range, which is, is way higher than we are today. Your bill will go up this winter compared to last. Now, a mild winter will ease the burden, as will the usual home remedies, checking your furnace filter, insulating doors and windows, and turning your thermostat down. The Department of Energy puts out a rule of thumb of uh, one degree down is a savings of 1%. But come daylight savings time, there should be relief. Probably toward the end of first quarter 2022, we're going to see prices probably start coming back down to where they were. Patience and a heavy blanket is a virtue. Casey Conlon, MTN News. Thank you very much, Casey. A 15-year-old Michigan boy accused of killing four fellow students at Oxford High School is now being charged as an adult. Ethan Crumbly was arraigned yesterday on charges that included first-degree murder and assault with intent to murder. He will also face one count of terrorism causing death, which is a rare charge for a school shooting. If convicted, he could spend the rest of his life in prison.
A Montana judge says parts of a new state gun law are unconstitutional. The district judge in Helena ruled the Board of Regents has the authority to manage the state university system and is allowed to ban guns on campus. He ordered a permanent injunction preventing the state from enforcing the gun law. The judge says the state constitution clearly gives the Board of Regents full power to control state universities. The Attorney General's office has already filed to appeal the decision. Water levels on the Madison River are dropping dramatically. A failure to Hebgen Dam is to blame. As MTN's Edgar Cedillo shows us, fishermen met along the riverbanks finding ways to help out. I'm currently standing in the middle of where the Madison River should be flowing. A dam failure at Hebgen Dam has caused water levels to dramatically drop and now groups of volunteers are here hoping to rescue some fish. In Ennis, the fishing community gathered early in the morning to work as quickly as they could to save fish along the Madison River. The worry here is that as it gets colder, fish could get trapped. Luckily, I could just call the boss and get work off immediately and come out here and um, try to make something happen. The urgency is not only to save the fish, but the community that this industry supports. This is livelihood for a lot of people in Ennis and um, West Yellowstone. According to the USGS, since Tuesday, water levels have dropped around a foot. It got to as low as 600 cubic feet per second. You know, monitor the river uh, and, and assess conditions as well as, you know, doing what we can to move fish that are stranded back into the main channel. Now FWP is monitoring the Madison River, but it is also assisting volunteers who came out. It's kind of sounds like it's going to be just a scoop and grab going in. The goal today was to cover as much area as possible. Groups of fishers gathered along the banks of the Madison River from Hegman Dam to Ennis. It's a, it's a great demonstration of, of how much people care about the resource in, in the river here. Fishers who met along the Madison say it's more than just helping save trout. It's Montana. It's part of Montana. It's part of our community. Right now, what caused the gate malfunction at the dam is still unknown, but people we spoke with say... Would like more answers from Northwestern Energy on what actually happened. Right now, Northwestern says they are working to fix the dam, but still haven't provided a timeline of when water flows could resume as normal. But these folks say they're ready to help out as long as needed. For right now, just hanging on the fact that the community's coming together and people are doing what they can. Along the banks of the Madison River, Edgar Cedillo, MTN News. Thank you very much, Edgar, and thank you for being here with us and watching Billings' only local morning newscast. Still ahead, grains and trains. They go together pretty well. We'll have more on why the shipping industry is so important to Montana farmers and ranchers. The time is now 612. Stay with us. We'll be right back. NASA astronauts Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron working diligently on their task of replacing a degraded communications antenna system. They're now